You are now reacting to the 12-member girl group Luna and their 2021 release, Paint the Town. You guys know them from Why Not? It goes, dee dum dum dee dum dee dum 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 Oh, I like that. Yeah, that was so cool. Yeah. All right, so you are in for a long script because Luna has even more complex lore than that past group that I was telling about. Okay, so since you guys are newer to the channel, I'm going to go ahead and explain the Lunaverse. Right. Each Luna member debuted first as a solo artist over the course of two years. There was a color, shape, and animal assigned to each of them. Side note, if you see a girl with a specific color surrounding her, or like deer antlers, or like a wolf pelt, it's because those are their animals Makes or sense. colors. How vivid. Stop it, Kevin. After they debuted as solo artists, they were grouped into three separate subunits. So there's one third. They are located on planet Earth. Odd Eye Circle place themselves between Earth and the cosmos, and each of them represent a moon, and each have an odd eye that gives them powers. When their odd eye becomes full into a moon, uh, they, like, their powers ignite, and together they're able to create a circle teleporter that allows them to teleport in between all the different places and worlds. What the happened? third subunit. <laughs> They're teleporting between places and worlds because of the because eyes of the eyeballs the, that they have that are the, in between the cosmos the, and the earth and the voices with the animals in the two years and the colors. Yeah, so is we that got Earth girls. We live in we got Earth then girls. We got space dimension. girls. That are, so but they're in we between. Are, yes. And how do you live? So they're not moon powers. I'm sorry. Yeah, Albert Einstein developed this formula. And we live and in between. And when you break the fourth wall, and how do you live? Like how do you how do you live in between the cosmos and the earth? You know the earth and the cosmos. That's not. That's the same thing. I don't know, I'm just reading the script, okay, that I found online. Sorry. <laughs> the third subunit is YYXY, which stands for Youth Youth by Young. They were born in Eden, a utopia land, there, which is located between Earth and Odd Eye Circle. Each member possesses a special fruit, and if they eat it, they'll be exiled to Earth. They end up rejecting Eden. Dude. So after you studied <laughs> eventually they became a team, and throughout their next few releases, they had to overcome various obstacles like a supernova while trying to find a way to unite as one team. So in the release before this one, they succeeded in creating a new moon to shield the Earth from the supernova, which then brings us to this release. So Paint the Town covers the theme of destruction of the old and rebirth as Luna continues their mission to protect the universe. Basically, they're a bunch of badass girls that, like protect people. Feminism. Yes. Go women. Yeah, I'm down with that. The song is composed by Ryan S. Jun, Hanif Hitmanik, Seb Savari, Dennis Deco, Kordnajad, and Yua. I don't know if I'm ready for this. <laughs> that was yeah. a lot of build up. Three, two, one. Pump it. Uh, oh. Ooh. <laughs> Hello. Oh shit. What in the world? Sure, okay, you thanks. You could just do that. It's a great melody. This is a this is a this is a nice melody. Catchy. And now we're in minor. Mm. Dude, I love the drum sounds. Yeah, it's like slaps. Yeah. For sure. Oh. Oh, these vocal stacks. They really that, that, like that arrangement, the vocal arrangement is genius. Mm -hmm. Not genius, sorry. Good. Ooh. Wow, and a triple meter! Oh, that bass is sick. <laughs> Back to double meter. They are doing these transitions really well. Is it gonna keep switching from major to minor like did at the beginning? I don't know. Yochin's rap. Let's go. God, those tom hits are crazy. The silence. I 
like the silence. Yeah, the silence goes crazy. The vocals are so rhythmic. Yeah. It's really clear. Oh, that makes you move. That's like visceral. I love that transition because she sings it in triple. I think this is halftime now. I think the chorus is halftime. And swung. And swung, yeah. This is so cool. It's so hype. The, the visuals, oh my god. It's so colorful. Wow. Having that bass go to flat too is awesome. Face. Oh, vocal quality. She just made fire with her hands. Ooh, where are we going? Ooh. Ooh. The flat two. Oh. Oh. Yes. Feel change. Nah, nah. Oh. Nah, nah. It's like a revolution song. Yeah. No, this is like super empowering. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag Stan Luna. <laughs> oh. I likes this. Yeah. <laughs> you likes this? I likes this. So that part's confusing to you guys, but it makes a lot of sense. You've been following them since debut. <laughs> okay. I see. So. <laughs> Glad I stuck around for that. That was brilliant. The way they used that triple meter shift into the chorus to give it that like, just really like tri yeah. tribal feel was so fu engaging. But the way they get into it is that the percussion doesn't go in triple until after, I don't know who is it that sings it each time, but she starts that, it's like a big pickup and she's singing it in triple with like no percussion underneath. So we get that introduction um, before it just like, it, it's not a hard cut. We get that little transition and it's so centered on this one singer um, changing the entire like meter underneath. I thought the and transitions the for everything were so good. I loved how they held over specific timbres into each section so you could still connect it back to the section that you just came from yeah, the and then they'd morph it so that you could connect it to the section that it's going to. Like you could hear all of the instruments there like leading you mm -hmm. to where Especially you're going. Especially that last chorus. So good. Yeah. I, it was like the really reedy oh, like woodwind I, instrument. I, 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 Oh, it sounded, so that nice. sounded like a swana, which is like a reed instrument in a big metal brass tube. And then they had also the pitched percussion that can go like dip up, like boom, boom, Tabla. boom. Yeah. The thing you hear when you ever you see no face. Dude, even the drum in the beginning when they had like bomb, bomb, bomb. Oh, yeah. yeah. What is, what is that? What is that drum called? The um... like I said, darabuka. That like what? Yeah, I'm like the, almost the, this positive. one. Oh, what? That one. The, like tabla. Yes, Tab it's, it sounds tabla. like tabla. Yeah, it's because I was like, that sounds like tabla, like slaps. They're they're like so satisfying. That that instrument is like. <laughs> it's also ridiculously it's hard ridiculously to play. Ridiculously hard. It's just all the little like rhythmic intricacies, and you yeah. have to have so much finger power to it's, like it's get like the different sound effects. The way that like tabla players group rhythms together, and the way it's performed is not like in the Western style. No. So so like the groupings of rhythm are often in like seven or yeah, like like odd odd. No odd odd note groupings. And it creates a very, I guess, distinct sound from what you hear in Korean K-pop music and even like Korean folks music. But it does draw up the question of like, are they appropriating this culture by using these instrumental sounds and wearing the kind of jewelry dresses throughout the music video? There has been some discussion I'm sure there's been, they've that. had some criticisms about that. I did some research looking into this song beforehand to see how people um, were receiving this. And when discussing cultural appropriation in K-pop, I haven't ever seen anyone discuss like the music itself. It's always just what the idols are wearing and the dance moves okay. and what the idols say. Those are the specific things okay. that people- Because I about. like, I just don't want to like offend anyone. 
Like, well, from your perspective, why did you like the mix of sounds from these two? Because it's places? so new. Like, mm. I've been listening to K-pop like basically my whole life, mm -hmm. and I think this is the first one where it's just like there's like a mix of cultures and different sounds and different instruments, and that and the fusion of that, I really like that. Because like it's new. I like new things. The first intro has already bring me yes. to the vibe. Like, whoa, this shit is new. <laughs> this shit is new. At the beginning, it just felt so like it was so sample reliant. It was building an energy based on the abilities of the produ from the production side. They kind of use it to create rhythmic intensity that us as the audience really haven't heard before. I think sampling is literally the the coolest thing like if you're able to hear something and say i know how to use this and borrow it in a way where it'll just elevate everything involved and pay homage to what came before it then i think that is just so sick that to me was easily my favorite part of this song what was like the most vocally attractive part that stood out to you Everything. You started to comment on the voice during the bridge, but then her hand caught a fire and you were distracted by that. <laughs> the first person that was singing had a very unique voice, or just had a very unique timbre to her voice. It was delicate, but it had, I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to describe vocal qualities because everyone's voice is unique. Honestly, Rafi will be <clears throat> much more articulate with, <laughs> with the voice in this because he he will fawn over the that bridge. And if he does if he doesn't say something about that timbre, then someone kidnapped Rafi. I really enjoyed the different vocal timbres and how sometimes they used them to like differ from one another, and then other times it was very blended. Mm. But right before that duet breaks into like the big like climax, nice. yeah, ba -ba! Um, there mm -hmm. is very light head voice in the top, and it's like descending down, and then in the bottom there's like more weight and like a collapsed velum or soft palate, and it's just creating this balanced effect that then explodes into that um, duet, and I think it was really really cool. Just really good vocals all around too. And that, and I love it, I love it. Also the melody in the beginning was great. What was cool was that they're kind of juxtaposing like these, like these chromatic, like the chromatic notes like with just the regular like tonic chords. So it was like, in there you hear just like. I just thought that was so sick. They hid the chromatic, the chromaticism within the vocal harmony very like low at first. And then it comes later in the bass, like full out in your face. And then even the vocal harmony on that one was really sick. Yeah, it stays with the but it's so it just goes down. The chromatic descent in the bass comes right after that. Yeah, so it's like a foreshadowing. And I think that's a really, really great way to lead your ears to the chorus. I think that's just like fantastic. And then I really like the, the pre-chorus. Mm. The pre-chorus just like it is short, it is not kind of like meandering pre-chorus. Some, sometimes the pre-chorus just like build up too long that it kind of lose the power. Oh. But this one is just short and then boom, here's the chorus. One, the chorus slaps. Like the way that it drops and also going from the, the bass going to one to flat two on what sounds like a random interval. Mm -hmm. Like, and, uh, and also that the fact that it also gets into flat six and five, it just sounds great. I really like the rap section. I honestly like the verses, just how much, yeah. how much there's there is going on, just like texturally. There's like so many different instruments just being passed around, and how rhythmic and driving it is. Like it's really fun to listen to. Yeah, and I think it just being so rhythmic adds to kind of the whole like, I don't want to say this, but like, well, like revolution, like girl boss, like, <laughs> like just like yeah, really anthem. like I, I hate I anthem. hate that <laughs> word, but like you know what I mean, just like anthem, like. Yeah, it's a revolution, like, that, that kind of thing. So I've heard this song before. The reason I appreciate it so much, even though, yes, there are things that we've heard before, and the structure, except for the ending, isn't exactly novel, I like how the verse, it feels like a series of vignettes. How, like, he, we start in major, he didn't Can you play? In, huh? Can you play on the piano? I, I guess. So we start... 
You know, we're like in a different world. And then when Kim Lip starts going, I want to be the cookie, cookie. <laughs> you know, that's like a different world. And then like two bars later, because I've actually analyzed this in my head. I've been thinking like, okay, the intro with the tabla is like, is like what, four measures? And then Heejin's thing is like sort of four measures. And then starting from Kim Lip's heart, we have these two measure long vignettes and each melody just feels very different. We have, you know, and then when Chu comes in, it's da 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 da. It's a subtle difference, but it feels different. And then when when Hustle sings like da go, let us put on a show, show da 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 da. da. And then when Jin Sol sings, it, da, the Nelmen bass comes in. So that all of these little hoops. And it just it just feels like more of a journey in a verse than I have often heard before. Well, that makes sense, I guess, with their own colors and their animals. Like, they each so, have yeah. their own sort of veil on the entire ensemble. Mm. Yeah. And also, I thought that the violin going up, maybe a violin, some sort of discant instrument flying up towards the last chorus was a great way to introduce the, the really high note. I think they, they, like, you have vocalists going, da right when the last chorus comes in but having that be faster and also not a voice was also cool nice. this is one of those songs that you could listen to like 10 times to just dissect the different yes. instruments out of and it. the chorus oh. is so catchy this is probably my favorite luna song that we've listened to i could only name yeah. you like three but this one's really good and i really liked some of the other ones ugh ugh that's slaps you in the face with awesomeness we come The next we, decade. Are we gonna coordinate it yes. with no countdown? Okay. Just with eye contact? 